All right, moving on, we have my reanimation deck. Uh, this deck is a reanimator deck, which means that the goal of this deck is to dump creatures in the graveyard and then reanimate them with a spell. So, um, yeah, let's go ahead. First of all, I have some removal spells. you got to have removal spells in a black uh, red deck like this one. Uh, this one is Dreadbore. Uh, it's two mana, destroy target creature or planeswalker. Um, so this one and terminate is both good, but this one's a sorcery. You can only use it on your turn, but it can destroy planeswalkers. And planeswalkers, as you know, can be kind kind of powerful. So uh, it's good to have this in deck. All right, then I have one of the enablers of the reanimation mechanic. Buried alive, <clears throat> three mana sorcery. You can search your library for up to three creature cards and put them in your graveyard. So yeah, I want to, to uh, put creatures in my graveyard. That's the goal of this deck. Him to Tarak, two mana, very, very efficient discard spell. Target player discards two cards at random for just two mana. So that's very, very efficient removal. This is one of the creatures I can reanimate. Um, and this is a really powerful creature. Iona, Shield of Emeria, 7-7 seven, seven flying. Uh, when it comes to battlefield, choose a color. Your opponent can't cast spells of the chosen color. So yeah. If you get this out on the third or fourth turn, the opponent can basically just concede right there. Avatar Discord, this is a this is a card that's meant to help me discard uh, creature cards I have in my hand into the graveyard. Uh, so five three flying for three mana, and so that's really really well costed. But the drawback is you have to sacrifice it unless you discard two cards, which of course is going to be I'm not going to play this unless I have good cards to discard. So if I have some extra creature cards like Iona in my hand, I can discard it using this card. And I get a 5-3 flying on top of that. So Terminate, um, not quite as versatile as the Dreadbore, but it can't kill Planeswalkers, but it's an instant. So you can use it on your opponent's turn. And it can't be regenerated. I guess Dreadbore you can regenerate. Interesting, okay. Okay, Exhum, this is one of the reanimation cards, very powerful one, just two mana. Each player chooses a creature card, and Graveyard puts that creature into play, so as long as the opponent isn't playing a reanimator deck, you're going to be uh, pretty good here, because you're going to probably have better creatures in your graveyard than they do. So, yeah, just two mana, I assume. Um, Broodmate Dragon, another one of my reanimation targets, um, have this card because when it comes into the battlefield, you get another 4-4, so you get two creatures for one creature. So, if your opponent has removal, they have to use twice the removal, so that's good. It's flying too. Avatar Woe is another creature I can reanimate. Um, six, five, ten or more creature. Yeah, that doesn't matter too much, but it has fear, so it can't be blocked by. I believe this this ability is not going to appear anymore in any cards. Um, this creature can't be blocked, so about artifact creature or black creatures, and then tap destroy target creature. That's a really powerful ability. So, yep, Avatar Woe. Uh, this is another card to help me discard Faithless Looting. It's basically a careful study for red. Um, draw two cards and discard two cards for one mana. Very, very efficient to uh, dig, dig deeper into your deck and to get rid of your reanimator creatures in your hand at the same time. All right, uh, it's buried alive again. Okay, another reanimation target is Verdant Force. 7-7, um, seven, seven, each upkeep you get a 1-1 one, one green creature token. Every upkeep, not just yours. So if this is a multiplayer game, you get a ton of them. A ton of creatures. Um... That means if your opponent kills it, you get still some uh, creatures left to deal with. Uh, Lightning Bolt, basic 1 mana 3 damage, gotta have that, it's a staple. Angel Despair, this is a nice one I have in this deck as well. If my opponent has something really annoying on the field, then I can just play this, I reanimate this, it comes into play, you destroy target permanent, which is anything on the field. So if your opponent has a really annoying combo or enchantment going on, just uh, reanimate this one and take care of it. Animate Dead, um, this has a lot of text on it, but just to simplify this, it's two mana, it's really cheap. Um, you can enchant this on a creature in a graveyard, and when it, it reanimates the creature, that it basically brings it back onto the battlefield, but the enchanted creature gets minus one, minus zero, which is not a bad, it doesn't matter too much. But um, yeah, it's just almost like Exhum, just bring it back for two mana. You, you enchant it with this. I think, yeah, and if this thing is ever destroyed, that, creature's di that creature dies. Okay. All right. Uh, Doom Necromancer is another reanimation card. Uh, yeah, it's just two two, but you can tap one, sacrifice it to return a creature card from your graveyard back into the battlefield. It's pretty simple. <clears throat> All right, another creature I can reanimate: Iridescent Angel, seven mana for four four flying, protection from all colors. 
So this one's going to be a little bit hard for the opponent to remove. They have to use a Wrath of God or something to remove it. But um, targeted removal, probably it's not going to work. We have Dawnbringer. Um, it's a reanimation creature that can reanimate other creatures. So yeah, um, you can see the mana cost of these creatures are ridiculous, but I don't care because I'm not going to play them. Um, beginning of upkeep, you may target creature card from graveyard to play. So every turn, I can get another creature from my graveyard to play. It's good. Like Jin Jitaxis, for example. This card is pretty ridiculous. Um, flash, it doesn't matter too much. Uh, at the end of your end step, you draw 7 cards, <laughs> and then your opponent's maximum hand size is reduced by 7, which means they have to play everything. They're, every turn, they have to play everything else, they have to discard it. So, <laughs> um, yeah, this card's pretty ridiculous. Imagine playing that, um, cheating that out fast. <clears throat> okay, Sphinx of the Steel Wind, um, kind of like a Chroma. I don't have a Chroma in this deck, but this is kind of similar. Uh, flying, First Strike, Vigilance, Lifelink, Protection from Red and Green. Just a lot of keywords on that thing. Um, pretty useful. Just, uh, yeah, it's basically like a Chroma. Alright, Blazing Icon, 5-6, um, and pretty simple ability here. Very powerful, creatures can't attack you. Uh, so yeah, you reanimate this one, and creatures can't attack you. It's really that simple. They have to get rid of this one to attack. I think that's it. That's my reanimation deck. I have a few other cards here that are not in my binder that I can just go with. Just got. Um, it's not part of this deck, but just to go over uh, these cards I got here. Michael Loth is a 4 4 Devourer 2, which means that every creature you sacrifice when this comes out, you get 2 plus 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters. And every upkeep, you get a 1 1. Oh, sorry, not every upkeep. Your upkeep only, not Verdant Force. Um, so you get 1 1 green. Sacking creature group for each plus one plus one counter. So that one's pretty powerful. So say you sacrifice two creatures, that's four counters. Four one one saplings every turn. Triskelion, uh, kind of an old card, but um, I like it. Uh, one one, it cuts uh, three plus one plus one counters, then you remove a plus one plus one counter to deal one damage to target creature player, so kind of versatile. Uh, say this is about to die, you has basically you can ping three different things on it, so it's like three mog fanatics on this thing. Staff of Domination is a really good outlet for infinite mana. So if you have infinite mana, then this thing can really... Yeah, so this this thing is a really good infinite mana sink. I'm surprised I haven't reprinted this card. Um, but yeah, you can untap it. You can gain one life, untap a creature, you can tap a target, you can tap a creature, or you can draw a card. And you can untap it for one mana. So if you have infinite mana, you can do all these things. Gain infinite life, you can draw your whole deck, you can untap all your creatures, or you can tap all your opponent's creatures. That's what you can do. Uh, Recent Wild I think I've gone over this card already, actually. Dovin Bon, I may have gone this card already. I'm not sure. Um, I think this was on my Fencer deck. Yeah, plus one on your next turn. One target creature got minus three, minus zero. Activities can be activated. The, in my second ability here, you gain two life and draw a card. Third ability is your opponents can't tap more than two permanents during their untapped step. So kind of a static orb on the third one. One side is static orb. Okay, Shivan Worm. This card, uh, I like this card. It's just the design is nice. I don't use it in any of my decks, but it could be used in a really aggro deck, I think. Five mana for seven, seven, first of all, is really good mana cost, and it's trample as well. But when it comes to play, you can return a red or green creature to your hand. That can actually be an advantage because you can bounce back something like a Flame Tongue Cave or something that has a come into the battlefield effect. So yeah, you play Flame, Flame Tongue Kevu, you would kill like a 4-4, four, four. then you would use a Shivan Worm, oh it's a 7-7 seven, seven Trample, and you get back your Flame Tongue so you can play it again. Yeah, it's a nice creature. Panoptic Mirror, um, yeah, seven, this is a interesting card because you can imprint, you can remove an instant or sorcery card with converted mana cost X in your hand from the game. And every upkeep, you can copy it and play it without its mana cost. So unlike Isacron Scepter, this thing can do anything as long as you have the mana. So say you have, um, it's so sorceries too. So say you have, um, I don't know, time reversal. <laughs> time reversal would be crazy, actually. What if you have like something that says take an extra turn, like walk the Aeons, for example. Okay, say you have a walk the Aeons. That's six mana. You take an extra turn after this one. That's what the sorcery has. Play six mana. You put it on this thing. Every turn, you take an extra turn which means you have infinite turns. So how crazy is that? Whether you see Tree Folk, 5-3 uh, Trample, when it dies, you get it back to your hand. Pretty simple, and I'm this is actually maybe on the reserve list, I think. Yeah, pretty simple. Uh, ability, not too powerful. 
uh, just cool. That's all. Blade Ring the Risen. Um, I was originally had this in my Reanimator deck, but I took it out because um, I like Broodmate Dragon a little bit better. But yeah, this thing you have to have another dragon in your graveyard. But when it comes back, you get another dragon from your from your graveyard into play, so you get two creatures back. Um, but I like Broodmate Dragon to get better because this one this one requires you to dump another dragon in the graveyard, and this four four is really not that powerful. So yeah, and I like to just have uh, Boomate Dragon, I can just have that one and not have other dragons in the graveyard. So yeah, that's it. Reanimation.